So hey and welcome back to the channel. So I normally always film my videos in my office which is just behind me there but I bought this gimbal a few months ago and honestly I've got about one or two uses out of it and I paid about 300 quid for this bloody thing. So I thought I'd be a little bit more exciting and take it for a ride and also get to show you guys the flat a little bit. So if you can see behind me this is my living room where I'm going to be filming this video. So I just want to, oh where's it going? There we go. I just want to start off by apologizing to my subscribers because honestly I haven't put out a video in probably about three or four weeks which I know is terrible but basically I've just been incredibly busy so I was working like a dog before the Christmas period so over Christmas and New Year's I thought okay I'm going to give myself a nice rest and then classically after New Year's I got really ill with the flu which knocked me out for about a week and then since then I've been focusing on basically launching a new product which I've talked about in some of my other videos and then just also a few other kind of exciting things which I'm not going to talk about just yet. But to make up for the lack of content, I'm just going to be putting out a huge amount of content from now on in the coming weeks and months. And I'm going to start off with this video. I want to talk about the main reasons why people fail when doing their product research and how you can avoid doing the exact same mistakes. So if this is the kind of content you're interested in, whether you're an Amazon seller, you're interested in Amazon MFA and just this kind of content, then hit that subscribe button and make sure you've got the bell icon turned on so you get notified for all future videos. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so I've had to come and sit on the sofa because this gimbal's really heavy, but if it does get too heavy, even sitting and resting my arm here, I'm going to switch over to my emergency tripod, which I've got just across from me. So one of the things I get asked about all the time is what are my product research criteria? So what, what kind of numbers am I looking for when I do product research on tools like Helium 10 or Jungle Scout? And this is the kind of problem that I want to talk about. One of the main issues with when people do product research and that is that they're focusing way too much on just the numbers. So when I talk about the kind of number aspect of product research, I'm talking about uh, the, the demand for the product, so the bestseller rate, the monthly sales, the product revenue, and then also the amount of competition. So how many reviews that on average the, the products on the first page have and you know how high those reviews are, what, what's the ratings for those products. And don't get me wrong, those numbers are really important. You know, for example, if a product has really low revenue, let's say, for instance, on the first page of products, the average revenue is about a thousand pounds per month. It doesn't matter how good your product is. The max amount of revenue you're going to be able to get if you launch that product is a thousand pounds a month because that is that is what the mark. That's what the market is for that product. So obviously finding a product that has a high revenues re is really important and equally with uh, with number of reviews you know people tend to ask me how many reviews do I look for well you know you may look for products that have under 50 or 100 reviews and again that is important because obviously if the first page of products all have thousands and thousands of reviews it doesn't matter how good your product is you're just not going to be able to compete because the other products just have so much social proof compared to your new product that has no reviews. So the numbers are really important, but the main, the main kind of mistake that people make is that they just go by the numbers. Okay, actually this is getting really heavy, so I'm just gonna switch over to the tripod. Okay, we're back in business, apologies about that. So going back to what I was saying, Focusing only on the numbers is the biggest mistake that people make when doing their product research. And actually, uh, I'm just, that just kind of brings to my mind that I, I don't think I've actually done a video on how to do the numbers side of the product research using a tool like Helium 10. So yeah, if that's something that you're interested in, just let me know by giving the video a like and dropping a comment in the comment section. Equally, if there's any types of videos that you wanna see or any topics that you want me to address in videos, just let me know in the comment section. It's just the best way for me to kind of know what, what you want to see and allow me to put out that kind of content. So yeah, back to what I was saying. That is the biggest mistake that people make by focusing just on the numbers because you've got to look at it like this. The way that I like to look at it is that product research is basically like a funnel. You start at the top of the funnel with all of your product ideas and the first half of the funnel is the numbers game. So everything we just talked about, the, the demand, the number of competitions, and so on. 
The second part of the funnel is a lot of the time which people don't address. And that second part of the funnel is improving on your competition. If you, if you basically just do the numbers game and you say, okay, this product has a good revenue, a low, low number of competition, I'm just gonna take a product that someone else is selling and just sell exactly the same thing. Why would a customer pick your product over one of your competition, especially when you have no reviews, if your product's exactly the same? So what we've gotta try and do is make our product stand out by improving on the competition. And there's three main ways that we can improve on the competition. So I'm gonna use some examples here later on to kind of illustrate these better, but let's just go through them one by one. So the first one is actual product improvements. So physical improvements on the product itself or just improvements to the product branding. Then the second thing would be bundling. So either bundling with a, second, a secondary physical product or bundling with a digital product such as an informational ebook. And the third thing that we can do to improve on the competition is just to improve on the listing. So maybe all the top, the top selling um, uh, items on page one all have crap photos or crap copies. So we can improve on that. So those are the three things we want to look for when we want to assess whether there's room for improvement. And to kind of help us uh, work out whether there is room for improvement and if there is how we can actually improve on the product, there's a couple of things that I like to do. So the first thing is to really get into the mind of the customer. So understand who the customer is. So first, you know, think about what's their gender, what's their age, what's their income, and try and really understand who the customer is, because then you can understand what the customer wants to achieve by buying the product and what they want to avoid by buying the product. Okay, so let's, let's get, get an example going here. So obviously <laughs> over the Christmas period, I ate a little bit too much and I've put on a little bit of weight. So one of my New Year's resolutions was to kind of cut down a little bit uh, uh, in January. So I bought this digital scale. So why don't we use this as an example because this works really well. So if we understand who the customer is who's going to buy the scale, we can think, okay, what does the customer want to achieve? Well, the customer wants to reduce their body fat and they want to kind of avoid losing track of their progress. So if we're kind of keeping that in mind. We can say, okay, what product improvements can we make to kind of stand out from the competition? And you know, using the same example, if we think about uh, the, first, the first point I talked about, which is actually product improvements. So it may be that all the, all the digital scales on the first page of the listing only show weight. So a potential product improvement we could make, which this scale actually does, is that we could say, okay, we're gonna make our scale not only record weight, but also record body fat and water content. So that would be a product improvement. Then, for instance, in terms of bundling, we could say, okay, well, if people want to measure their and keep track of their weight, maybe they also want to keep track of their, um, their belly circumference. So maybe we should bundle the product with a measuring tape, which is exactly what this company did that came with a measuring tape. So that's an example of how you could bundle the product. Or, for instance, with a, uh, a non-physical bundle, if you wanted to bundle, we could bundle with an ebook. So we could say, okay, here are 10 cardio exercises for losing weight in January. That would be a great, uh, a great digital bundle that you could provide with this product. Then in terms of uh, listing improvements, well, maybe for all the competition for this product, don't have many photos. So we could add kind of better photos, maybe some infographics or some lifestyle photos with someone actually standing on the scale. So really that's the process that we wanna go through. And if we go through that process and we can pick out lots of product improvements, bundling opportunities or listing improvements, then we can say, okay, if the numbers are right, and we can improve upon the competition, then this product is a go, it is a winning product. But if the numbers are right, but we just can't find any room for improvement, then, you know, then it hasn't worked its way through the funnel. It's rejected at that point. And that's the second step that so many people fail to take into consideration and is why they fail at their product research. So yeah, it's so important that your product both fits the numbers criteria and also has room for improvement. If it has both of those, you've got a winning product on your hands. 
So I hope you found that video useful. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and turn the notifications on for all the videos that I've got coming up in the next weeks and months and I'll see you in the next one.